Hi, my name is Dr Deborah Kinnear and in this presentation I will talk about the prevalence of physical ill health in adults with learning disabilities in Scotland. In 2013, the Scottish Government made a call for urgent action to address the health inequalities experienced by people with learning disabilities. And it highlighted that we need to have a better understanding of the health problems faced by people with learning disabilities and how we can improve their health and their well-being. We know that there's likely to be a different pattern of health problems in people with learning disabilities and this can be due to, for example, genetic factors, living sedentary lifestyles and diet. Most studies that have looked at the physical health of people with learning disabilities have methodological limitations. So, for example, they have investigated small numbers of people or they have focused on selected age groups or looked at specific levels of disability, for example, only those with mild learning disabilities. There are also very few studies in the UK looking at the physical health of people with learning disabilities and no studies looking at certain physical health problems such as constipation and musculoskeletal problems. The aim of this study was to report the physical health conditions of adults with learning disabilities. We carried out a large prospective cohort study which included adults aged 16 and over with learning disabilities with and without Down syndrome who underwent a comprehensive health assessment. We wanted to find out what are the most common health conditions and what is the extent of multimorbidity, so having two or more conditions. And we are interested in multimorbidity as it requires different management approaches compared with single disease care pathways. In terms of the cohort characteristics, 1,023 adults consented to take part. The mean age was 43.9 years, so ranging from 16 years of age through to 83, and 186 individuals had a diagnosis of Down syndrome. In terms of level of disability, 38.9% had a mild learning disability, 24.2% moderate, 18.9% severe, and 18% profound. And there were slightly more men than women. For the adults with Down syndrome, there were slightly more women than men and just over half lived with a family carer. So moving on to answer the research questions. The first question was, what are the most common physical health conditions? We tabulated the top 20 physical health conditions and as you can see, vision impairment was the most prevalent, reported by 47% of the cohort. Obesity was the second most prevalent and epilepsy was the third. So what does this information tell us? It tells us that over a third of this cohort experienced painful conditions such as osteoporosis and musculoskeletal pain. Almost a third experienced disabling conditions such as vision impairment and hearing impairment. And almost a third experienced potentially life-threatening and painful or disabling conditions such as constipation, hypertension and obesity. So all of these conditions impact on the quality of life of individuals with learning disabilities. And from the table, you can see that most of these conditions are amenable to treatment. We broke the prevalence down by those with and without Down syndrome and found that there were some conditions that were less common in adults with Down syndrome. For example, epilepsy, ataxia, cerebral palsy, osteoporosis and hypertension. So this highlights that there are variations within different categories of learning disability, such as those with Down syndrome. We also looked at the top 20 most prevalent conditions in people with Down syndrome. And as you can see, thyroid disorder, skin infection, congenital heart disease and menstrual tension are in the top 20 conditions. Conditions that were not as prevalent in those without Down syndrome. The second question we wanted to answer was, what is the extent of multimorbidity for this cohort? In figure one, you can see that along the x-axis is the total number of physical health conditions recorded for people with learning disabilities from the health checks. The y-axis tells us how many people were reported to have that number of conditions. As you can see, the mean number of physical health conditions was as high as 11. And more than 30 people with learning disabilities had 20 or more physical health conditions. What we need to remember is that this is a cohort of adults with a mean age of 43.9 years, adults ranging from 16 to 83 years of age. You would expect to see slightly higher numbers of physical health, con health conditions in older, the older population, but these are figures that are spread across the entire adult life course. Almost all participants had at least one condition reported and 98.7% had two or more conditions. 
We looked to see if there were any differences in the extent of multimorbidity for the adults with and without Down syndrome. And as you can see from the graph, the extent of multimorbidity was similar in both groups. So to conclude, this is the first study to report on multimorbidity in people with learning disabilities across the entire adult life course and a large population-based sample where each individual had their health comprehensively checked. Multimorbidity is important as its management is much more complex than that of single conditions such as drug-drug interactions and drug-disease interactions which introduce complexities. To give an example, Osteoporosis, which can lead to multiple fractures and non-healing of bones, is treated with bisphosphonate. But people with gastroesophageal reflux disorder are unlikely to tolerate these drugs. The current problem we have is that healthcare systems and care pathways are focused on the management of single conditions. We also want to highlight that the list of the most prevalent health conditions in adults with learning disabilities differs from that seen in the general population. For example, diabetes and heart disease. So the recent work to better understand and address multimorbidity by Barnett et al in 2012 does not transfer readily to the population with learning disabilities. Also, the extent of multimorbidity in adults with Down syndrome was similar to adults with learning disabilities without Down syndrome, but the pattern of disease clusters differ. The findings highlight that many of these conditions are painful, disabling and or potentially life-threatening and in the main they are amenable to treatment if high quality care is provided and multimorbidity taken account of. Our findings are both novel and important and ultimately have significant implications for service planning and development. It is vital that healthcare professionals and carers have increased awareness of commonly occurring conditions in adults with learning disabilities so that they can identify and report physical health conditions in a timely manner. Doing so will prevent individuals with learning disabilities suffering potentially painful and or disabling conditions unnecessarily. Any policy initiatives or guidelines on multimorbidity need to be relevant throughout all stages of adulthood in people with learning disabilities. And health check programmes need to include checks for the most common problems experienced by people with learning disabilities and not be based on the general population.